You've probably seen the excellent Rush film about the 1976 Formula One season, and the star of that is surely Nicky Lauda. His is a remarkable story. This is a short view back to the past to F1's greatest comeback. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. Lauda had dominated the 1975 World Championship and looked to be doing so again as F1 arrived at the fearsome Nürburgring for round 10 of the 16 round 1976 season. There were already strong doubts about the circuit's safety. Even in the 1970s, it was regarded as something of an outlier, largely because of its long 14.2 miles. It was very difficult to cover with safety and medical vehicles. After 1973, the circuit had started a program of safety improvements, such as putting in more barriers. But really, it was always going to be a challenge to make the Nürburgring safe enough for modern Formula One cars, and that was 50 years ago. Now, given what was to follow, it should be remembered that Nicky Lauda was the first and only driver to go under the seven minute barrier around the 14.2 mile Nürburgring. He did that in qualifying for the 1975 race to take pole position, and he called it later the ultimate madness. Lauda had found this circuit a fantastic challenge in his early days, but as the safety fears grew, he was predictably one of the more vocal drivers on the grid, and he suggested a boycott for the 1976 race. He was outvoted and duly and professionally turned up to qualify second, just behind arch rival James Hunt's McLaren, the 1976 German Grand Prix. Now, another one of the Nürburgring's problems was the weather. It could be raining on one part of the circuit and dry on another. Now, that's a problem that drivers still face today, but imagine that over the length of a circuit that is three or four times longer than a normal Grand Prix track in 2022. There was rain just ahead of the race and all the drivers switched to wets except for Jochen Mass, who had some local knowledge and he knew that there were other parts of the track that were already drying and that it would dry quickly. So he started on slicks. That proved to be the correct choice and Mass was climbing the field on the first lap, at the end of which most of the field pulled in for slick tyres. Lauda, who'd made a bad start, was one of those and although the Ferrari stop was okay, he was in mid-pack on the second lap. Shortly after his stop, he got to the left-hand kink at Burwerk and suffered a suspected suspension failure. He pitched the car across the track and into a bank, where it bounced back across the road and was hit by Brett Lunger's car at high speed. The Ferrari burst into flames and Lauda was trapped in the car. His helmet also came off, which explains why he had such bad burns on his face. As was normal for the time, the marshals nearby weren't really equipped to deal with such an incident, but the driver stepped up. Arturo Mazzario, Lunga himself, Harold Ertl and Guy Edwards all helped to free Lauda from the wreckage and pull him clear, and he was conscious to start with. Even so, Lauda had suffered terrible injuries, mainly to his lungs and his blood. The burns were perhaps the most obvious thing, they weren't the thing that put his life in danger. As the race weekend wore on, the race was stopped, James Hunt won the restarted race, the news of Lauda seemed to get progressively worse, and he was even given last rites in hospital while he was in a coma. But famously, Lauda didn't give up that easily. He locked on to the voices he could hear in the hospital, and he even requested for his lungs to be drained. Apparently a very painful process, but he knew that that's what he needed to survive. And he soon started showing signs of improvement, particularly when he went to recuperate at home. Incredibly, and much to everyone's surprise, not least Ferrari's, Lauda made a return just six weeks after his fiery crash at the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Apart from the desire to obviously get back to racing and of course defend his championship lead that James Hunt was eroding, Lauda also wanted to get back because he wasn't convinced about the internal politics at Ferrari. They were already looking at replacing him, first of all with Emerson Fittipaldi, then with Ronnie Peterson and finally settled on Carlos Reutemann who had been driving for Brabham. And Reutemann, it's fair to say, was not Lauda's favourite driver on the grid. He thought that the best way to get back was to be in the car. Now Lauda had to convince Ferrari that it was a good idea and actually conducted a test to show that he was fit to do so. But even when he arrived at Monza, there were many that thought his decision was not a good one. That was only backed up on Friday practice when he was scared, although he didn't admit it at the time, only later did he admit that he was still fearful in the car, but his lap times weren't up to much either. He went away, had a good think about it and came back refreshed on the Saturday and got faster and faster and faster as the session went on. Much to Lauda's enjoyment, he outqualified both Reutemann and his regular teammate Clay Regazzoni to line up fifth, a truly remarkable performance in itself. Lauda did get caught out at the start, although he wasn't the only driver, some confusion as to whether lights or a flag were going to be used, and he dropped down to 12th in the middle of the pack, which is not where he wanted to be. 
He did start to recover though, and when the two Tyrrells had trouble, he moved into a remarkable fourth place. He then had to deal with his own oil pressure issue and had Jody Schechter climbing all over him at the later stages of the race. Amazingly, he held off Schechter by 0.1 seconds. And really, how he managed to maintain an average speed of almost 120 miles an hour for an hour and a half with the injuries that he still had is truly remarkable. When he took off his blood-soaked balaclava, it was clear that Lauda's wound had opened up during the course of the race. And Jackie Stewart was among many drivers to suggest it was the most miraculous thing they'd ever witnessed in sport. Sport, not motorsport, sport generally. Now, one of the possible titles of this video was going to be the crash that killed F1 at the Nürburgring, but actually, Lauda always maintained that it was on its way off the calendar anyway, and it's pretty easy to believe that, given the size and the safety movement that was going on at the time. Lauda went on, of course, to lose the championship to James Hunt by a single point, and even that was a courageous act because he pulled out of the season finale at Fuji, the very wet Japanese Grand Prix. No other drivers were brave enough put their hands up and say the dangerous conditions were too much. And he lost the championship by one point. But in no way does that detract from his remarkable comeback in the first place at Monza a month or two before. In typical Lauda style, he wasn't really very happy at Ferrari after that, but still managed to win the 1977 world title and quit the team with two races still to go to have a much happier time at Brabham, although that didn't yield a title. Also typical Lauda, he then decided to walk out on the team in the middle of the 1979 season as he'd had enough of driving around in circles. He then made probably motorsport's second greatest comeback in 1982 with McLaren and went on to take his third world title for the same team in 1984. A truly remarkable career and a remarkable man. And of course, he went on to have much success with Ferrari and Mercedes many years later, although of course, not behind the wheel. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button and subscribe. Take a look at some other great videos on Motorsport TV and do let us know in the comments if there are any other stories or in fact superb characters you'd like us to take a look at in a future video.